It's not giving his team its money's worth. ABC's Aaron Hayes is in Chicago. I will always feel a part of, part of the Chicago Cubs, and I will miss you. It's just so unusual. In the middle of his contract, baseball's $7 million a year man says, I'm just not playing well enough for you anymore. Here's your money back. I didn't want to cheat myself uh, or anybody else, you know, playing that way. Sandberg was in a slump, playing poorly, but so was his team. The Cubs are in last place in their division. He could have faded into the background, kept collecting his millions. Plenty of big money players do it. They're going to hang on, and more than likely, they're going to make excuses. They're going to blame somebody else. But not Ryan Sandberg. He was one of baseball's best. A home run for Sandberg. In his 12 years in the majors, a graceful golden glover. Oh, what a play! Up until this year, his bat could sing. Everyone knew him as a decent man, in love with the game. When he realized his best games were behind him, he refused to limp along just to pull in the money. I think the fact that he can walk away from about 12 or 15 million dollars, which is what he's doing, uh, is an indication of his character and integrity. He... Character and integrity. Baseball is sure going to miss a guy like him. Good luck. Aaron Hayes, ABC News, Chicago. And that's our report on World News tonight. On Wednesday evening, turning point on the Cubs second baseman, Ryan Sandberg, retired today. This is a, a shock. An emotional Sandberg said that he has lost the desire that he once had, and he's not been playing very well lately. Sandberg spent the last weekend on the bench. He's gotten only one hit in his last 28 at-bats. Sandberg, though, has won nine gold gloves over the years. He leaves the game as one of the best players to ever take the number three spot on the diamond. He also gave up well, about $15 million by retiring early. Well, Mike Tyson went to court today. Leaps, great leaders who... Live from Chicago's very own, this is WGN News at 9. After 12 stellar seasons at Wrigley Field, Rhino's winning ways come to an end. Saying he no longer has the desire and that he's not playing up to his potential, Cub star Ryan Sandberg takes himself off the roster permanently. Right now, you're looking live at Wrigley Field where the sign says it all. Thanks from the team and the fans. Good evening. I'm Steve Sanders. And I'm Allison Payne. More on the Sandberg retirement in a moment, but first, another major sports figure tops the news tonight. He's Hall of Fame football player O.J. Simpson. Tonight, he is free after a grueling day of police questioning about the murder of his ex-wife. And there is a Chicago connection to this story. Our Randy Salerno has been following all this and joins us now live. Randy. Allison, O.J. rolled into the O'Hare Plaza Hotel here about 6.15 this morning. He was in town for a golf outing, and the staff here says he was in a good mood when he got here. All that, however, changed about two hours later when O.J. received a phone call telling him his ex-wife had been murdered. He headed off to O'Hare to catch a flight back to L.A., where L.A. police say he has not been ruled out as a suspect. O.J. Simpson's a second ex-wife, 35-year-old Nicole Brown Simpson, and 25-year-old Ronald Goldman were found murdered outside her Los Angeles condominium around 2 o'clock this morning, Chicago time. O.J. arrived at the O'Hare Plaza Hotel around 6.15 this morning. He apparently made about a dozen phone calls and received one call. He left here two hours after his arrival. He was hurried this morning. He, he, he definitely wanted to get to the airport. Uh, he wanted us to call him a cab as, uh, as quick as we could and said he needed to go to the airport. While Simpson was on his way back to L.A., Chicago Area 5 police searched his ninth floor hotel room. Uh, they were up in the room for a period of time and uh, they had the mobile lab here and, and their people were up there and uh, spent a lot of time in the room and uh, were left here about, about 4 o'clock. Police apparently removed several items from the room, reportedly hotel property. Simpson, meanwhile, was taken in by L.A. police for questioning and sent home with his attorney three hours later. He hasn't made any statement with regard to, to anything other than he's shocked. That he had nothing to do with this tragedy. Uh, he hasn't been accused of being involved in it. So we haven't had uh, any discussion along that line at all. And, uh, no, no, no one's made those accusations. Is O.J. Simpson a suspect or not? The question was, is O.J. Simpson Well, obviously, we're not going to rule anyone out, and we will pursue whoever we need to pursue until we bring the uh, uh, 
party to justice. Five years ago, the Hall of Fame running back was fined at $700 and ordered to do community service after pleading no contest to wife beating. Simpson and his ex wife recently discussed getting back together. Now, OJ and his ex wife had a seven year old girl and a five year old boy. Police say they were both inside the condo at the time of these murders. They were escorted out. They were not injured, and police say they made sure they did not see this gruesome scene. OJ, meanwhile, was in Chicago here to play in a Hertz golf outing. He, a spokesman for Hertz, the rental car company, that golf outing was held earlier today. Reporting live near O'Hare, Randy Salerno, WGN News. All right, thank you, Randy. There are reports tonight the victims died of gunshot and stab wounds. L.A. police will not confirm the cause of deaths or divulge a possible motive. Of course, Allison, another shocker in the world of sports tonight with the retirement of Ryan Sandberg from the Chicago Cubs. WGN's Dan Rowan joining us now with more on this uh, story. Well, I'll tell you, shocking, stunning, yeah. Steve, and Allison, it was all that and much, much more. Another Chicago sports hero takes an early exit. Ryan Sandberg has been a fixture in this town since 1982. You can hardly imagine the Cubs without him. But get used to it. This is the ultimate stand up guy who felt he'd lost the edge and wasn't earning his huge and controversial paycheck. So he up and quits, leaving behind about 20 million bucks and a ton of broken hearts in his wake. I am not the type of person who can leave my game at the ballpark feeling comfortable that my future is set regardless of my performance. And I am certainly not the type of person who can ask the Cubs organization and, and Chicago Cubs fans to pay my salary when I am not happy with my mental approach and performance. Therefore, I am here today to announce my retirement effective immediately. An explanation eloquent in its simplicity, noble in its intent, very much in character for Ryan Sandberg. He went to Cubs manager Tom Treblehorn Saturday morning with his feelings. Treblehorn gave him two days off to reflect, thinking Rhino might change his mind. But he didn't, and tonight, the Cubs organization is in shock. This was an absolute surprise to me. Uh, I think, uh, as as it was to everybody else, uh, he he gave me no inclination. I don't think he gave anybody an inclination. He just has standards a lot higher for himself probably than I do and you do and the fans do. And he he, he wasn't performing up to those standards and enjoying things. It was a surprise to me. It was a bomb to me. And uh, uh, but I knew it was important to him that. Uh, uh, because he spent a lot of time on the decision. This isn't some emotional decision. He isn't that type of guy to wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to retire. But Sandberg would not pin the blame for his leaving on the Cubs' less than total commitment to winning. I know that everybody wants to be a winner and everybody wants to win. I know all the players, the coaches, manager, the GM, all the way up, owners want to win here. And uh, I know that, and that's a fact. After the news conference, a meeting with teammates, and then goodbyes for Rhino and his wife, Cindy. He couldn't leave, though, without one last autograph session with Cub fans who've adored him throughout his career. The fans uh, have been outstanding towards me. There's no doubt about that. To go out there and before the game and you see a full house every day, uh, that really means something to a player, and it meant something to me. And that helped me go out and give my best every day. Ryan Sandberg driving off into the sunset. I can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> and where do the Cubs go from here, Danny? Um, well, they're in last place now, aren't they? So they really can't go any lower than they are already. So, you know, from that perspective, the loss of Rhino won't mean that much. Uh, from a prestige standpoint, I think he brought some people into the house, and he was the guy that everybody identified with the franchise. So it's going to hurt him from a, an image standpoint, I think. And as far as uh, the money that he was going to make, well, maybe they'll take that money and turn it over into some new players during the offseason. But this year is just about a lost cause anyway. Uh, forget about the strike, which might be happening. But uh, Rhino made some unbelievable plays in a Cubs uniform, and you'll see some of those coming up in sports. He's a very controlled, disciplined guy. Interesting to see him caught up in the emotion of the moment. Only a couple of times did he have to pause and, uh, you know, catch his breath and yeah. uh, maybe choke back a tear or two. Uh, and it was definitely out of character for Ryan Sandberg. So you really knew just how much this moment was hitting him. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Well, shocking news that swept the city even took longtime Cubs announcer Harry Carey by surprise. Tonight, Harry's wondering if there's an epidemic among Chicago sports heroes. 
Oh, I'm shocked. It, it, it's unbelievable. Here's the greatest ball. Here's a, you know, this must be the Michael Jordan syndrome, where a guy has so much success, so young, it's no longer any fun for him, and he wants to try something else. And tonight, fans are reeling for the loss of one of the most popular players in Chicago sports. The newest member of our on-air staff, WGN's Dave Eckert, went to Wrigley Field right after the announcement was made. The sign flashed the normal messages outside Wrigley Field, but there was nothing normal on this day, the day Ryan Sandberg called it quits. Well, you got five together and a two right behind them. Oh, fine. So they hold out. Okay, great. Lydia Landini and Catherine Lawrence picked this day to buy some tickets for a game in August, knowing that game and all others will be played without number 23. It's very sad. We, I like him because he's a Cub and he's a very good player, but excellent player. You don't want to see him go. But uh, it's his decision, you know. He's going to do what's happy. He'll be remembered. He'll be remembered well. The home plates outside Wrigley Field duly note all the Cubs who've made it to the Hall of Fame. And in five years, Ryan Sandberg very likely will be there and here. But today, that's not what's on the minds of Cub fans. This was a day for fans to react and reflect, to try and catch a glimpse of their hero while fighting off the pouring rain. Fitting the sky should open after Sandberg's Thunderbolt, Fitting, too, the fans here said they understood. I'm happy for him because he's able to be with his family and maybe get his life back together with no road trips. It's um, other games in his way with family. I think it's good. Maybe, but that doesn't make it any easier to take. Dave Eckert, WGN News. Before leaving the ballpark today, like a true hero, Sandberg obliged fans by signing autographs. No. I thought of myself as a baseball player, and I tried to stick to that. You know, I'm not, I'm not anything besides a baseball player. And what a ball player he was. There it go! Way back! It might be! It could be! It is! Hey! Holy cow! The game is tied! The game is tied! It was June 23, 1984, when Ryan Sandberg became a household name with two clutch homers on national TV against the Cardinals and Bruce Souter. I think it, it uh, made the country recognize that we had a pretty good club. Most importantly, I think it gave Ryan Sandberg national credibility. They heard about him, but they got to see him. From that day on, Sandberg was a baseball idol. He won the 84 MVP award and launched a streak of 10 consecutive All-Star appearances. His batting numbers were among the all-time best for any second baseman. There's a drop! In 1990, Rhino launched 40 homers to lead the National League, and yet it was his defense that landed him in baseball's record book. Line drive, great play! Ryan Sandberg! Sandberg's back! All is well! Sandberg has nine gold gloves, more than any other second baseman. He once put together a streak of 123 errorless games and another of 248 games without a throwing error. The only thing Ryan Sandberg's career lacked was a World Series. I, I regret not getting to a World Series in 84 and 89. Rhino can console himself with plenty of free time to spend with his family at his magnificent home in the mountains south of Phoenix. And a bulging trophy case will remind him of the Cubs in Wrigley Field. Meantime, we in Chicago will have a trophy case full of memories to remind us of him. Pretty solid career numbers that should land him in the Hall of Fame. All this not bad for a second baseman who was told early in his career he wasn't excited about pro ball enough to ever make it a career. I think he did okay for himself. He showed him. <laughs> we will miss him. Though. We sure will. Whether emergency or warning attack? Somewhat. Attendance? Some people need to be aware. Folks on the south side of Cook County. We and, uh, and being on the game of the week, which is, is very special. Uh, you know, I think really did give me a boost and, and definitely gave me a boost to uh, make it to the All-Star game that year. Was that, at that particular point in time, the highlight of your career, that game and then everything that took place thereafter? Oh, I was just in shock. I mean, for, for weeks and months after that and maybe the rest of the season from that one game, that, that game really gave me a, a boost and uh, really told me that I could do something special. I think that's what carried me over the rest of the season. Um, Has that carried the rest of your career? 
I think so. I think that uh, doing something like that says, wow, you know, I did, I did something like that, you know. Maybe I can do that more often or, or be that type of a player. And I think that that has, I still remember back to that day. And, uh, uh, you know, I think that it's definitely made a big impact on my career. That team, um, there's so many highlights and games to remember. Certainly the, the one where you hit the two home runs is the one that stands out more than anything. But uh, it was kind of interesting. A little while ago we were talking in, in uh, and someone said, and I, and I'm drawing a blank now, one of your teammates was saying, oh, Jody Davis says half the city w was fired up once we get into July, August, and September, and the other half's going, oh, don't worry, they'll collapse sooner or later. Um, was that something that you, you kind of sensed as well, thinking maybe yourself, geez, can this team hang on? We heard a lot of that talk. Uh, I remember the city going nuts, uh, you know, over what we were doing. And me being a young player and not being from Chicago, I didn't know what all the fuss was about. You know, I, th I thought uh, yeah, they, they you won know, every year. Sure, I thought the Cubs <laughs> won every year. I mean, I didn't know what the big deal was, and and just the big fuss. And I remember having uh, the last two months of the season having news teams over at my house, like at 11 o'clock at night, setting up and doing interviews, and you know, keeping the kids up and the wife. And you know, we just went along with it and really didn't know what what the big deal was. When you get to, to the playoffs now, um, the, the first two games, they couldn't have gone any better. Uh, now you go to San Diego. And, and Gary Matthews, it's interesting. It seems like every time we talk to all you guys who play on an 84 team, Gary Matthews' name continues to come up. And he says on that flight out to, to San Diego, he goes up to Jim Fry, and he wasn't happy about the pitching rotation for San Diego. And I guess he had made the comment, and Fry says, well, we're setting up for the World Series. And Gary Matthews says, well, we're not in the World Series yet. Um, was there any moment that, it, once you got out to San Diego, where you said to yourself, oh, God, maybe the wheels are starting to come off here? Uh, I thought we were in good shape all along. Um, having Rick Sutcliffe go the, the last game, I still felt confident because the way that he pitched, uh, you know, in, since we got him August and September, and the way he pitched in the first game. I thought we, uh, up until the last game, I thought we had things in control. Uh, Felt like the team was very loose uh, going uh, to San Diego, uh, having to win one game. But the one thing I do remember was uh, the first game, the introductions. I remember when they announced Gary Templeton and he ran out. Mm -hmm. He had a white towel and raised it above his head and was waving it, getting the crowd into it. And I remember thinking to myself, "Wow, well, you know, they're down, down two games. Why is he doing that? You know, we're going to win this thing." Mm -hmm. But from that point on, the crowd was really uh, vocal and really behind them, and uh, and you know I just remember that moment, and you know I felt like he really got the fans into the into the games after that. Do you, what as you look back now, I mean, 1984, that's 10 years ago now. Hey, can you can you believe it's been that long since that team and that season and that playoff and the whole thing? No, I I can't believe that. Uh, you know, I still have the uh, the very good memories. Uh, you know, they're uh, they're clear as in my mind as anything. But to think that it's been 10 years, it's hard to believe. I run into a lot of the guys uh, on the streets, or uh, they come out to Wrigley Field, or, or I run into some of the guys. And uh, to think that uh, you know some of the guys that were veterans on the team, kind of my age that I am now, now they look at me as a veteran on this team. Uh, you know, it's. Ten years have passed, and uh, it's kind of amazing. When we come back, Dan Roan takes a look at the brilliant career of Ryan Sandberg. Hey! Holy cow! The game is tied! The game is tied! It was June 23rd, 1984, when Ryan Sandberg became a household name with two clutch homers on national TV against the Cardinals and Bruce Suter. I think it, it uh, made the country recognize that we had a pretty good club. Most importantly, I think it gave Ryan Sandberg national credibility. They heard about him, but they got to see him. From that day on, Sandberg was a baseball idol. He won the 84 MVP award and launched a streak of 10 consecutive All-Star appearances. His batting numbers were among the all-time best for any second baseman. There's a drive! Way back! In 
1990, Rhino launched 40 homers to lead the National League. And yet, it was his defense that landed him in baseball's record book. Line to line, great play! Ryan Sandberg! Sandberg is back! All is well! Sandberg has nine gold gloves, more than any other second baseman. He once put together a streak of 123 errorless games and another of 248 games without a throwing error. The only thing Ryan Sandberg's career lacked was a World Series. I, I regret not getting to a World Series in 84 and 89. Rhino can console himself with plenty of free time to spend with his family at his magnificent home in the mountains south of Phoenix. And a bulging trophy case will remind him of the Cubs in Wrigley Field. Meantime, we in Chicago will have a trophy case full of memories to remind us of him. And now who better to reflect on Ryan Sandberg than the man who saw him put on the uniform and then suddenly take it off. So Harry, tell us a little bit about your reflections on Rhino. Can you believe it? Would you ever believe that a city that had two of the greatest individual stars in sports would lose them both? Michael Jordan of the Bulls amazed everybody when he announced his retirement. Now he's playing minor league baseball. And Ryan Sandberg amazed everybody when he, too, went into premature retirement. And in the case of uh, Michael Jordan, I think perhaps it's both the, the same syndrome. I like to call it a Michael Jordan syndrome. Michael just got tired of playing basketball, apparently. He had accomplished everything that was to be accomplished. And then he thought about what he wanted to do when he was a little youngster, be a major league ball player. And so he got bored of, with playing the game he so excelled in, and now he's playing baseball. And he had the incentive that Ryan Sandberg didn't have this year, because Jordan at least could look ahead to winning the fourth consecutive world championship of basketball, which the Bulls would have won if he'd been there. But in the case of Sandberg, he didn't have that kind of an incentive. But like Jordan, he's been playing baseball since a very young man. He's got two youngsters of his own. He, uh, he says that he lost the edge. I don't know what edge there is, but I know if Ryan Sandberg hit nothing, he'd help a ball club. He's the greatest second baseman I have ever seen. Whether you want to talk strictly defense or whether you want to talk offense. I've seen Billy Herman, but that was late in his career. Then I saw Bill Mazeroski. I saw for years Red Shandies. I saw Bobby Doerr. I saw the great Joe Morgan. But none of these guys could do as many things as well as Ryan Sandberg. And that's why I say he's the greatest second baseman I ever saw. But now, there is no Sandberg to play. There's a young guy named Ray Sanchez. And in two games, he showed you a lot of brilliance, a lot of excitement, a lot of great plays, both in the field and at the bat. And remember, this happens all the time. The players come and they go. They come and they go. They're all temporary ball players on the stage of baseball. It's a game that goes on forever. But having said that, Steve, we're sure going to miss Ryan Sandberg. Well, Harry, the game of baseball has made it through the Black Sox scandal. It's made it through world wars. It's made it through strikes, work stoppages, and lockouts. It's made it through the retirement of all the great players that ever played on this field. And it will make it through the retirement of Ryan Sandberg. But somehow, it doesn't hurt any less. But stay with us. We'll be back with a look at the starting pitchers coming up.